Hey guys, Xiaomi. Today, let's talk about Giants Keep a Biz Heart. I want to share with you guys all the possible team from the very beginning to the very best speed team you can make for your account. Also, in this video, I will not be talking about the Dark Blacksmith or Jara or the Light Demon because those are LD rare unit that most of you guys will not have anyway. So let's ignore them, okay? Let's farm this dungeon like a normal person. Let's start off with the safest and also the most free-to-play friendly possible. I recommend these two support units. They are probably the best for this dungeon at keeping you alive and providing you with the best support possible. First, we have Shannon on Despair or Swift, Speed, HP, and HP. You actually don't need that much accuracy for this dungeon. The accuracy requirement for this dungeon is only 35%. So you can focus on having more attack or more defense or more HP. Highly recommend you having anywhere from 230 to 240 speed before speed lead, okay? If you have speed lead that I have in this team right here, you can reduce Shannon's speed by another 20 and make her tankier. Because if Shannon has anywhere from 230 to 240 speed total, then she can move two times before the trash wave. Because you want Shannon to at least buff defense or AoE attack the trash wave to make sure that they are shut down and you can defeat the trash wave because if you let them attack you, you might die to the revenge in the boss stage. Next, we have the consistent defense breaker because this guy only have one skill and that skill will defense break the target. He can also provide attack break and attack bar pushback. So he's amazing for this boss. I have him on a random build because you probably have random rune as well. Speed, HP, and HP, some sort of crit rate so that he can do some minimal damage and the least amount of accuracy I can put on him and he will attack break and defense break all the time. But Sean, I don't want to build Roy, I want to use Lauren. Okay, I got you. So if you want to use Lauren, then you can use Lauren on a swift shield build. You don't want to put her on violent because she will violent proc attack the boss too many times and wipe your entire team before your damage dealer can take a turn. Shield rune will absorb some damage when the boss revenge you and swift is just good enough for her in this dungeon. There's also another option, Bella Dion for the defense break and the heal, but so far I like Roy the best because usually you will take the most damage from the boss revenge and you can't heal if you're dead. So I think preventing the boss from actually doing any real damage with Roy attack break is going to be better than trying to heal with Bella Dion because you are not going to be there to be healed anyway. Next, we have the Holy Trinity damage dealer for this dungeon. These three guys are probably the best three damage dealer for this dungeon. I have tried so many different things and these three units have always come out on top. First, we have Veramos, the king of dungeon nowadays. I have him on Rage. You can have him on Swift, Violent, whatever, okay? Make sure you have crit damage on him because this skill can do anywhere from 100,000 to 150,000 on the boss and not even a max decked out crow can do that kind of damage easily because you cannot put continuous damage on this boss so you cannot stack that many debuff but this guy can do so much damage on a low cooldown and he can cleanse the defense break from the tower and that is one of the biggest reasons where you will die from the boss revenge next we have lin on a rage bear as well contrary to popular belief you don't have to put attack on her i actually try to make her as tanky as possible because you will get revenge from unwanted proc or whatever nonsense happen during the boss stage and you want Lin to survive to use a skill 3. Her AI is questionable but her damage is not. She is the best damage for this thing. Like nothing come close because of the extra 30% from the skill. She can easily do anywhere from 200,000 to 250,000 on the boss and that is just absolutely insane. Lastly, we have the Win Ifrit. Who would have thought, okay? I, if I knew I had to use this guy, I would have bought Ifrit and max his skill. I had to spend Devil Bond on him and I don't like it. So for this guy, you actually want to have attack on him because skill 3 can clear trash wave if your runes are good enough. Mines are not good enough. This still can't clear trash wave with two fight set on my team. That is just so sad, okay? This guy with the help of Veramos can clear trash wave and this skill does the same damage as Veramos and he provides speed lead for you so that you can reduce the speed on your entire team. He does good damage with skill one as well. An amazing unit for this dungeon. So with this starting team, your run time will be anywhere from a minute 10 seconds to a minute 30 seconds because you cannot clear the trash wave fast enough. If you feel like your team is tanky enough, you don't need Shannon anymore and you do enough damage so that the trash wave is not a concern to you. You take out Shannon, put in Savannah. Savannah can be on a violence, a fatal, a rage, whatever. I don't care, okay? Make sure that Savannah move first in your team so that she can set up for Veramos 
and Akamamir to do the AoE damage to clear the trash wave. Also, you can consistently defense break the boss as long as you have more than 35 accuracy and more than 2000 attack in total. So on a speed crit damage and attack build and attack artifact, you can easily get the attack requirement to defense break the mid boss and the final boss no problem and this unit is probably the best for this dungeon for better stability for better run time better everything savannah is just the best unit for this dungeon but then you will reach a point where you will not need roy anymore and you want more defense break for faster run time this is my siege galleon so i'm on speed attack and accuracy but you only need 35 accuracy for this dungeon but i highly recommend violent because you want as many chances to use this or this as possible because he will use his skill this this guy is stupid okay so i put him on violent and combined with savannah and akamamiya the trash wave will be clear very very quickly but then what if you don't have the savannah now let's say hello to your free to play dark chicken jara called helia so this is helia this is helia 2a okay you can definitely run your helia on a shield fight set or just triple shield is gonna be okay as well the defense break and the branding will help you to destroy the boss with Lin and the other two Ifrit very, very easily. Helia will help Galleon to defense break the mid boss and the final boss thanks to skill 1 and skill 3. They both have a very useless 2 turn cooldown skill 2 and that is very, very sad. But with Helia, your run time will be going down all the way to potentially 35 seconds. So your overall average run time will be below 1 minute and this is probably the most free to play and fastest team available right now. There might be a new team in the future. Who knows? I hope there's going to be a new better team. But right now, I think this is going to be the most free to play and fastest team for Giant Abyss Heart. But Sean, I don't have Akamamiya. Can I use Jemaya? Okay, Jemaya is kind of fine, but I use Jemaya in my R5, so I'm too lazy to switch rune around. But Jemaya does have a skill too that do good damage to the boss. And this can allow for more damage from Lin and Veramos. But this guy just have overall better skill set. Two AoE damage skill. You can't ask for a better skill set for this dungeon right now. And one of them can clear wave. One of them can clear boss. So this guy is just superior to Jemaya in many, many different ways. But if you want to use Jemaya, you can definitely run Jemaya. But Sean, what about using Tesha to clear the trash wave? That is totally okay as well. So I've been using Tesha a little bit too. And this skill allows you to destroy the trash wave very, very fast. But Tesha will contribute next to nothing in the boss stage, which is very sad because it doesn't matter how well you build your Tesha, she will hit like a wet noodle compared to a Kamamir or Lin or Veramo. Okay, but Sean, my team has been failing though. Like, it's not very safe, right? This kind of setup right here, my runes are not as good. If you happen to have a Laika, take out the Helia, put in the Laika, and the Laika will solo the boss for you in case things go wrong. If you can bring Laika to the boss stage, the boss will not be able to kill Laika very easily, while Laika can absolutely destroy the boss because his attack will not land as a glancing hit, and he can heal himself, and he can do very, very good damage. So bring Laika to the boss, and if you fail, Laika will make sure that you will not fail and destroy the boss for you. If you want to be funny and creative and use random damage dealer that you find very cool, like the Wind Battle Angel or Wind Martial Cat, you do you, make the best team, don't follow me, fuck this guy because creativity is important. Find the best team and share with the community. But so far, those are my suggestions for the Abyss Heart. I hope this video was helpful to you. And good luck farming because purple runes drop like rain in this dungeon right now. And I really like it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.